It's only one bottle of water. Christmas only happens once a year. It's only one disposable plastic bag. How bad can it be? It's only one banana. What difference can it possibly make? We all have to do our part. And for some of us, that part is much, much bigger than others. There is no planet B. But there is a book B, where the B stands for bananas and the carbon footprint of everything. So today I'm going to go off piste a bit and I'm going to try and review this excellent book. Prior to July, I thought that Mike Berners-Lee was the guy that invented the internet. It turns out it was actually his brother, Tim. But anyway, prior to July, I had not heard of Mike Berners-Lee or indeed how bad are bananas. But some friends of mine kindly bought me this book for my birthday. I am notoriously difficult to buy for. And if there's something I want, I would generally spend a lot of time researching it and buy it for myself. So usually my friends will buy me even though I say no gifts please, something that I can consume that is guaranteed not to get wasted, but might actually get me wasted. Like, why? But anyway, some friends bought me this book and it is truly worth every single gram of CO2. So today I'm going to explain why I think this is an essential book and why I think that in this brave new carbon conscious world that every single household should have a copy. And then we're going to finish today with Anthea. Yes, she's back, reading a couple of the sleeve notes from the book. So do stick around for that and hear what Bill Bryson and Peter Littman have said about this terrific, fascinating, useful and enjoyable book. Bollocks, I think I just ruined Bill Bryson's review. Anyway, let's get on with it. I think it's fair to say that most people watching this video have heard the term carbon tax bandied about over the past few months as governments, neighbours, world leaders, celebrities and even some corporations have woken up to the fact that man-made climate breakdown is actually happening. Fasten your seatbelts folks, this shit is beginning to get real. The problem you got is that people drive too much instead of walking and then they want to go warm places on holiday and of course there's all the carbon isn't it all the carbon from that and then people eat too much meat obviously that doesn't mean not me i don't eat that much meat Want to know what your own fair personal annual carbon allowance would be, irrespective of wealth, if we stand any chance of getting runaway climate breakdown under control? Want to know how much of that you use up every time you buy a pair of cotton jeans? Stay one night in a luxury hotel. Buy a pair of leather shoes. 15 minutes in an electric shower every day for a year. Take a solo flight into space on Elon Musk's SpaceX Falcon. I could go on, but eventually you might feel you don't need to buy this book. But you really do. We all need to be thinking about our carbon footprint as a shared and limited resource, because it is. And we need to be thinking about it as having a value, understanding what that value is and assigning for the moment our own value to everything we do. Like we are paying cash for it. And this book will help you do that. Tim's, sorry, Mike's style is very entertaining yet informative. It is a really easy read without the anger, you'll be pleased to know, of, of my aptly named YouTube channel. It is packed full of information, yet is always entertaining and will question almost everything you thought you knew about green living. Once you have it and have read it, I'm a slow reader, I've literally devoured it over a long weekend. You will almost certainly keep it handy and keep referring to it as you try and mentally calculate the carbon costs of many of the things that you do and buy every single day. Will there ever be a fair carbon tax where we all have the same amount of carbon to spend irrespective of wealth? Of course there fucking won't. 
but there will be something where we start paying more for our personal CO2 output. This will take years and we don't have years. Time is running out. So in the meantime, we have this book. Buy it, preferably from World of Books. Link in the description below. No, of course I don't make any money from it. I don't make any money from any of this, but World of Books is probably the most ethically sound online bookseller. I'll explain why in a later video, but please buy it, read it, love it, share it, or gift it. Perfect for Christmas, birthdays, secret Santa, bar mitzvahs, christenings, weddings, baby showers, anniversary, or gender reveal parties. And if you care about this stuff, please do share this video too. You can share it on Facebook, you can share it on Twitter, Reddit, LinkedIn, or anywhere else. You can share it by text, or email, or in person, but make sure you walk and don't drive. And please do subscribe to my channel and let me have your feedback. Have you read the book? Are you planning to buy the book? Do you think it is fair for the wealthiest 10% of the population to expel far more than their fair share of this poison into the atmosphere. And don't forget to whip the like button. It really is surprisingly pleasurable. So for anyone tuning in just to hear Doris, I'm sorry to tell you that Doris is not well. So we're going to have her back next week for one last Angry People's Post Bag. But this week, if I've not already convinced you to buy a copy of Bananas, my lovely assistant Anthea is going to read out a couple of the Steve notes for you. But before we go there, I want to thank Mike and Kate for buying me this wonderful book and John for suggesting that I review it. So welcome back, Anthea. I'm delighted be back. Are you 100% certain that Doris never watches these? If it's not cats do the stupidest things, then there's no <laughs> way Doris will be watching this. The only thing she can read is the Daily Mail and a bingo card. Okay, great. So you're going to read a couple of the sneeze notes, yes? Fantastic. Let's go. Terrific. I can't remember the last time I read a book that was more fascinating, useful and enjoyable all at the same time. Bill Bryson. Age 69. If we're serious about really addressing climate change, we need to become energy and carbon literate, get to grips with the implications, not only of our choices, but also the bigger infrastructures which underpin the things we consume. How can we aid educate our desires, unless we know what we're choosing between? Mike Berners-Lee, to my complete delight, has provided just the wonderful foundation we need. A book that somehow made me laugh while telling me deeply serious things. Peter Lippmann, director of Sustrans. Thank you, Anthea. Thank you, Mike Berners-Lee, and thank you for watching. If you liked this video, or even hated it and just feel strangely compelled to punish yourself with more, then you might like this one here, which uh, is one of my most hated videos about Insulate Britain, and another one here that people also hated about the idle rich in space. What do you mean I'm not supposed to eat it? I was hungry.